the burning happens and the rearrangement of the electrons happens, putting it in a lower state. And that's why burning, quote unquote, likes to happen, right? But the question you have to ask yourself is, okay, well, if it was in a higher energy state to begin with, with the, the, the paper and the oxygen, and then it goes into a lower energy state after burning, CO2 and H2O, right, which is very, very stable, very, very lower, uh, low energy state. Okay, if it started at high energy and it ended at low energy, where did the excess energy go? Well, ask yourself the same question. If I'm at the top of the mountain, I have high potential energy. If I jump off and I go to the bottom of the mountain, I suddenly have low potential energy. Where did the energy go? Well, I tumbled all the way down the mountain and my potential energy at the top of the mountain was converted into mechanical or kinetic energy as I rolled down. In other words, it went into agitating my body and tumbling. It went into kinetic energy and I got to the bottom, but I was rolling with a very high velocity at the bottom. And so it was converted into the energy of movement. We call it kinetic energy. So the same thing is happening with burning. When I burn it, the electrons are rearranged, the atoms are rearranged into CO2 plus H2O, right? And the energy that it was locked up in here before gets converted in the burning process into movement of the atoms. And we call that heat. It also goes into light, which we're gonna talk about in just a second. That's what we see when we see the burning. So the energy from the high potential energy state goes into light, which we see in the burning process, and it goes into heat. That's why campfires are hot. That is what is happening when things burn. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.